Hiya, and welcome back to A Masquerade in the Woods, the game that teaches us that the best way to get with your desired crush is to agree with that, to get with your desired furry visual novel love interest, is to agree with literally everything they say. Oh no, I so bad just want to make that a redeem, but I'm worried about copyright. I'm seriously worried about copyright. Anyways, let's just hop right in. But will I actually make it? Maybe. I pull my head out of the water, stumbling back from the sink and into the stall behind. I cough and gasp in an attempt to empty my lungs of water, darting my head around to grasp my surroundings. At the same time, my paws fly up to rip the mask from my face. It lands in the pool of blood that started forming just under the sink. Only moments later... The bathroom door slams open and Shepard's heavy footsteps march inside. Oh no. Oh no. He stops in front of the open stall door, turning the sink off and reaching down to grab the mask. Then he turns to me. With a low roar, he grabs a hold of my hoodie, pulling me to my feet and slamming me against the stall wall. His forearm presses against my throat as his eyes almost glow with anger. A growl escapes from behind his sharp fangs. TALK! I clutch at his forearm. I... What did you do? N nothing! I didn't... I managed to squeal out, heart racing. Bullshit! He shouts, slamming me against the wall. Why'd you put it on, Andy? I, I don't know. I'm s sorry. I struggle for air between every word. You know what happens to people who bullshit me? The mask drops from his paw before he reaches back and pulls a pair of pliers from his back pocket. As soon as his arm loosens from my neck and my feet hit the floor, I try to run. But the handcuff tying me to the pipe holds me in place. Oh no. His furless fingers pry my muzzle open and the metal tongs grip my fang firmly. Now see it still or I'm about it. I kick and writhe against him but to no avail. Slowly he begins pulling the pliers back and forth and with it, my tooth. Oh god! Oh my god! Oh god! As each nerve ending snaps from the strain, an agonizing pulse of pain echoes throughout my skull. I scream, but nothing but a gurgle comes as the stream of red coats my throat. One by one, the strings and blood vessels tear. After what feels like hours, I hear the snap. <laughs> but it's not the snap of the t of my tooth finally coming loose. It's a horrible ceramic crunch of my fangs splitting in two. The shock sends a new wave of adrenaline down throughout my body, washing over me like ice water. Then the pain. Another muted scream fills the bathroom as the tongs grip onto what remains of my bloodied fang. I close my eyes. I just want to go home. I pull my head out of the water, stumbling back from the sink and into the stall behind. I cough and gasp in an attempt to empty my lungs of water, darting my head around to grasp my surroundings. Same time, I paws fly up to rip the mask from my face lands in the pool of water that started forming just under the sink. No. No, 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 no! Push myself back up, my heart pounding beneath the pressure in my chest. Get it out! Something sharp! I need something sharp! My claws instinctively begin scratching at my wrists. I scan the room, head snapping back and forth, until my eyes land on the broken mirror at the end of the row of sinks. Get it out! Hesitation takes over, but only for a second, before I lift my elbow and slam it against the glass. Something sharp. My wrists feel like they're on fire as I reach down into the sink and grab one of the shards. Get it out. I gotta get it out. It burns. Get it out. I stumble back into the stall, tugging at the sleeve of my hoodie to expose my forearm. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. It burns. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. It burns. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Cody? I snap my head up. G get away from me. I shout at the top of my lungs, pushing myself further into the corner of the stall and holding the bloodied shard out. His expression quickly changes to one of concern. I rapidly lift a pot of my muzzle, feeling my teeth. 
While they're still there, the taste of copper lingers on my tongue. As his paw reaches out towards me, I flinch. Don't t touch me! He stops, his paw hovering in the air between us. Cody, you're safe. Give me the shard. No, it burns! I have to get it out! Just breathe. I fucking am! I can't do this. You're not thinking clearly. You're tired. You need to rest. Not thinking clearly? My head has been this clear since I woke up in this fucking place. No, I know exactly what I need to do. I need to get home. I retract my paw, pressing the piece of glass against my wrist once more. Before I'm able to draw more blood, the hyena lunges, launches forward, pushing me up against the wall and grabbing me by the wrists. I scream, kicking my legs. Calm down. No! I shout, writhing in a strong grip. You're keeping something from me. Let me go! You remember things you're not telling. You know something. He leans in close as I keep kicking, his hot breath washing over me as he shouts. Quit the act! What happened to Ludwig? I won't let this happen again. And so I open my mouth and sink my fangs into the striped beast's furred arm. He hisses, letting go of my wrist to grab his own where my teeth pierced his skin. That's my opportunity. Slipping past his big frame and straight towards the exit, I'm halfway to the door before he even speaks up. Cody! Yeah, hiya. And by the time he does, I'm already halfway down the hall, pushing the front door open and crawling up the steps into the alley. I don't hear the rest. I'm going home. Tiny's out. What do you mean, thought you were eaten? Out? What happened? Is he okay? What is he? Oh, we're only freaking the fuck out, River. Don't worry. We're only freaking the fuck out. It's getting dark. Real dark. I wish I had a flashlight or something, or at least a phone to light the path. The moist grass beneath my shoes squishes with each step as I pass between the thick tree trunks. And with every, stre and with every step, the smell of ash gets stronger. I tell myself I know where I'm headed, but in reality, I'm completely lost at this point. I lift my arm to wipe my eyes, the salt from my tears sending a stinging pain down my forearm. A snapping sound breaks the quiet ambience of the forest. I stop my ears instinctively twitching in the direction of the noise. I turn to look. But it's too dark to see anything except the outlines of the trees. Could have just been an animal. Though considering the last time I was out here, I'm not taking anything for granted. I pull the shard of glass from my hoodie, adjusting my grip around the jagged edges. I see you! I call out in a jagged voice, my eyes darting between the trees. I'm armed! But no one answers. As I scan my surroundings, however, the sound of something else fills the silence. Running water. Slowly, I begin walking. As the sound grows louder, the forest floor grows muddier. Soon, moss makes up most of the ground, and my shoes sink a good few centimeters with every step. Moisture seeping in through the soles. Trees become more sparse and are replaced by rocks and large boulders overgrown with roots and moss. And between them, a large spring emerges, the water rapidly rushing downstream. I sit down on a nearby rock with a heavy sigh, feeling my stomach roaring and my head beginning to ache. God, my entire body's aching. Fuck. Okay, Cody. You've got two options at this point. You can do what you came here to do. Or you can try to find your way back into town. Or I could just end it. It's almost comical how familiar the option feels. How, after so many years of suicidal thoughts, the option of taking my own life tax itself onto any fork in the road as a third path, no matter how trivial the decision.
I'm going to get serious for a second. Um. Yeah. Yeah. This line right here. Uh, take it from me because this is actually from personal experience, actually. Uh, sort of shit isn't fun. It's not fun. Seriously. If you are considering suicide in any way, shape, or form, like suicide, self-harm, please reach out for help. I... I seriously cannot stress that enough. Just reach out to someone. I know you've heard... If you're... Chances are you've heard it a million and a half times already. Don't kill yourself because life's worth living. Well, if it helps... And this is actually going to sound kind of stupid. Um, If it helps, listen to Dinner Is Not Over by Jack Stauber. It That song actually does help a lot. But seriously, try to reach out to someone if you're able to. And back to the story. I could get out of bed today or I could stay in. Or I could end it, all, end it all and be done with it. Should I make that important call or ignore it? Or should I kill myself? I chuckle at the ridiculousness of the thought, despite the morbid subject. Yeah, it's... While I... You know what, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get even more personal. I'm, I'm turning on the webcam. I'm turning on the webcam just for this. While I don't actually have experience, by that I mean, like, uh, actual, like, attempts, unfortunately, I, yeah, 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 no, I'm not going there, I am not going to go there, I'm not going to go there, let's just actually go through this i chuckle at the ridiculousness of the thought despite the morbid subject death becomes a comfort a safety blanket knowing it's always an option an easy way to solve it all i stopped fearing it a long time ago coming here didn't change anything i run my fingers through the fur on my left arm feeling the crusty fur from dried blood around the recent wounds i managed three days i would say it's a new record but since i can't remember what happened before i got here it's hard to tell I wish I could say, say I had something to stop me from doing it. I've always envied those with faith. Those with the capacity to believe in something greater than themselves. Religion, spirituality, a higher calling, or just a cause. Something to lend structure and context to the everyday. Something to compare and contrast their lives against. I wish I had that. Who am I kidding? I'm not looking for something to live for. I'm looking for something to die for. An excuse to not go out like a coward. People will die for their country, their beliefs, their way of life. Perhaps this cause could be something to die for. Finding those responsible for this whole mess. Those beasts with the faces of men, as Shepard called them. Shepard. I shake my head, shutting my eyes to rid myself of the thoughts of what happened. Carefully, I slip the piece of glass back in my pocket. At the same time, my paw strokes my neck, feeling the pulsating headache slowly worsening. I've made my decision. And I guess this is as good a place as any. I strain my ears for any strange noises one last time before I take a deep breath. Hey! I'm not really expecting an answer, but even so, I lift my paws and cup them around my muzzle. Hey! Why am I here? I know you had something to do with this. 
I saw you at the hospital. Why'd you bring me here? I want to go back. Take me back. Answer me. Fucking answer me. I shout, standing up and kicking my foot at the soggy ground. Oh! I stumble back, tripping over my tail and landing in the wet moss. Th who's there? Va you're you're in my head. Get out of my head! I said get out! I snap my head in the direction of the noise, breaking the silence. I crawl up behind the rock, carefully peeking over the edge into the darkness. Ooh. A silhouette emerges among the trees. I hold my breath, straining my eyes. They limp through the moss, grunting with each step. Then stop, looking from side to side, lifting their muzzle. They sound stuffed, and after a moment, they let out a frustrated grunt. Found you. My legs push me up and away before I even realize I'm doing it. And I run, hurtling through moss and mud, zigzagging boulders and trees. Behind me, more footsteps. They're getting louder. The ground becomes dry, firm. While difficult to see, it feels like an overgrown road. Or at least what remains of it. At the same time, the sound of running water grows louder along with it. Then a low metallic groan joins the forest choir. Until a large building appears between the trees. Two houses, one on the other side of the river, with a corridor connecting them suspended above the water. It'll be pitch black in there. I can lose him inside. I take a deep breath and keep running, up against the decaying wooden wall, pushing my paws against it as I scurry along the exterior. I almost stumble as my foot hits steps, but I regain my balance and sprint up the stairs, paws still pressed to the warped planks of wall. An opening appears, and I squeeze between the rod rotting wood to make it inside. My shoe snags on the crack, and I trip catching myself on knees and paws. Oh, was that... Oh, was that Riot? Are there purple voices Riot? The smell of rotting wood and peeling paint is overwhelming compared to the fresh air outside. Did I read that last line? Yeah. I look back at the only source of light the crack had just crawled through, letting in a gentle stream of moonlight from the trees above. Did I lose them? Shit! I scramble backwards into the dark, covering my mouth with a paw to silence my heavy breathing. I know you're in here. I carefully move back, slowly sliding along the floor. I heard you in the woods. I could smell you. I've got your scent. They slowly turn their heads, sniffing the air as they step inside. The scent... of prayer. The scent of fear and the scent of blood. Fuck. My arm. I keep crawling back till I bump into something cold. Their head snaps towards me. There you are. I jump to my feet and run into the dark, my eyes slowly adjusting to the black environment, bumping into barrels along the way. Do I need to censor it all? Like, Mr. Developer, Mr. Pack be packing if you're here, do I need to censor? Oh, I don't need to censor, okay. I'm gonna barrels along the way. But they adjust too slow as the creaking floor suddenly gives out and I fall. My chest hits the opposite side of the hole with a heavy thud. As soon as I'm able to gasp for air, I can't help but scream. Soon after, hurried footsteps down what sounds like a staircase, followed by laughter. I 
got you. I fucking got you. You're so fucking stupid. The man kicks a chair out of the way, knocking it into a rickety table. Ah, fuck. My nuts. I try to stand up, but my left arm gives out under me when I'm pushing myself up. And from the shadows into the moonlight, seeping through a glassless window, emerges my pursuer. You! The wolf from last night, George's house. The same one who stabbed Lucas. Did you miss me, raccoon? Because I sure as fuck missed you! His slim body leans down over me, his paw violently ripping his shirt open. You see what you fucking did to me? Even in the dim light, the crude tattoo is clearly visible, along with the severely bruised and infected scarring it caused. You know how bad the shit hurts? He grabs me by the hoodie, and in the dark, the glint of a blade becomes visible in his right paw. Where's my meth? He whispers through gritted teeth, most of them missing. I, I don't have it! Give it to me. I don't have it! Where is it? He releases his grip and I fall back down on the damp wooden floor. I raise my working arm to my bruised cheek. The wolf begins pacing back and forth across the room. He's breathing heavy and his paws shaking. I am owed my compensation. He said I could have it. All of it! He suddenly stops, lifting the blade towards me. But then you! And, and that mutt! And that fucking rat! He turns his head, spitting. Had to show up and ruin everything! But now, I got you, and you're right where I need you! He steps closer. What? Huh? I don't... I don't understand! Yeah, it's about as loud as it can get, and I'm not turning up the, uh, one thing. I'm gonna turn it up a bit. Uh, I know where it is! He stops. If you just... Oh my god, thank you for the follow! If you just... Let me go! I'll give it to you! All of it! The wolf takes a step back, eyeing me up and down. Or, you tell me where it is, and I'll hand you over to them dead and save you the torture! He swivels the blade in his paw. That didn't go too well last time, though, did it? That didn't end well for your friend. For Georgie? Georgie was sloppy! He didn't deserve a spot at their fucking table! He lifts the knife to point it at himself. But I do! And you! Before pointing it at me. Your! I'll begin to shimmer. Our heads turn towards the wall where light shines through the cracks from a distance. Faint footsteps become audible outside. He's here! What? Who? He turns back to me, taking a hurried step forward. I pull the piece of mirror... Hey, yo, did the stream just fucking restart? Did it just fucking restart? Hang on, let me check. Son of a bitch! It ended. But I mean, it's back. Yeah, it's back. 
I pulled a piece of mirror from my pocket, holding it out in front of me. Let me go, or you'll never see that meth again. His expression turns to shock, but only for a moment. Yeah, yeah. There were there were some technical issues that showed up. I know you were getting it from George. I lie in a hushed tone. He hesitates, rocking back and forth on his feet. Looks like you were right. Footsteps outside turn from wet grass to wood. I dart my eyes between the cracks in the wall and the wolf. Until you find a new one, I'm your dealer. And if I die, it's gone. Before a door somewhere, uh, somewhere rattles. Truce? The canine lets out a frustrated huff. And I realize that right now my life lies in the hands of an addict and the promise of a fix. <sighs> What's he doing here? From the dark comes a man. and behind him a tall, brooding figure almost twice his height. Good evening to you too. Honestly, didn't even notice that there were technical issues. Yeah, I, I didn't. I genuinely did not notice. I'm so sorry about that. Good evening to you too. What the fuck is this? Why'd you bring the freak? I presume you must be Mr. Hansen, the man. A well-groomed hyena extends his paw, tilting his head in a condescending gesture. Clark. It's a pleasure to finally meet you in person, Clark Hansen. The wolf hesitantly shakes his paw, his grip loose, his eyes on the towering brood of a dog behind. My name is... The Red Prince! The hyena smiles, giving a quick nod. That's right. What do you want? The hyena lifts his paw to the table next to him. I was hoping we might be able to sit down for a chat. The wolf steps back, startled as the brute steps forward. He bends down, picking up the chair the wolf had kicked over earlier. Please, sit. Hansen slowly sits down and leans back, adjusting his groin in the process. The prince begins removing his coat, turning and handing it to the white dog. Did you come here alone? Yeah, I, I just... He trails off. Hmm... I mean, I just don't understand why here and not at the fa- Ah, uh, yes, I'm sorry. But our usual accommodations are unfortunately taken tonight. He offers Hanson a polite smile, raising his eyebrows in obvious false excitement. Another game. The prince leans back as he sits down, crossing one leg over the other and letting out a satisfied sigh. Now, do you know why I called you here? I can make a pretty good guess! And what would that guess be? I'm guessing it has something to do with Georgie. Correct, though, more precisely, your task last night. The hyena picks his bag off the floor, placing it on the table. The wolf, however, has his eyes on the titan looming just out of the reach of the light. As the prince opens his bag, he notices the wolf's gaze. Ah, yes. Benny, my boy. Benny, the tall beast, breaks eye contact with the wolf, who in comparison looks short. Would you mind waiting outside? I believe Mr. Hansen would prefer a more... private... setting. Ah! 
Benny's eyes go back and forth between the prince and the wolf. But after a moment, he nods, walking off into the shadows. Both canines sit in silence as the snow-colored Goliath's heavy footsteps echo off the walls. Until the door is once again heard creaking on its hinges before shutting. The hyena offers the wolf a reassuring smile as he pulls a notebook from the bag, and fishes a ballpoint pen out of his jacket. Alright, now would you be as so kind as to recount last night's events to the best of your recollection, please? His digits carefully flip through the pages. The fuck is this? Some sort of interrogation? The hyena immediately stops to meet his gaze. Mr. Hansen, I can assure you, nothing could be further from the truth. I simply want to understand your view of the events. It's a standard procedure for all our employees, really. It's simply to keep a written account of events. The wolf hesitantly nods, sighing, his leg bouncing below the table, and his long, untrimmed claws scratch at his chest. Good, now then, why don't we begin with the basics? He presses the back of the pen against the table, producing the ballpoint tip. How did you first come to meet Mr. Falk? The gray canine swipes his paw under his nose, producing a stuffed sniffle. Meth. He deals meth. The prince nods, the pen in his paw scribbling across the page in his book. Dealt. The scribbling stops as the hyena looks up, meeting the wolf's eyes with a saddened look. He looks forward tilting his head ever so slightly to the side and clasps his paws together. And may I add, what a tragic loss it is to us all. My deepest condolences, Mr. Ha Mr. Hansen. Hansen looks off to the side, pulling back. He was just a dealer. The prince leans back in his chair again, the sorrowful expression on his face had gone just as quickly as it came. Of course... Was anyone aware of your contact with Mr. Falk? The wolf shakes his head. Friends, family, co-workers. Hansen leans forward, sighing in frustration. The prince simply looks back down at his notes, writing. And I understand you performed some services for him as well. Yeah, when I was broken, needed a fix. Could you describe those services, please? The wolf's head drops, idly fiddling with his claws. I, I needed a fix, okay? I didn't, didn't have any cash! He suddenly sits up straight, throwing his arms out. Fine, yeah! I fucked him, okay? That's what you wanna hear? Before falling back with a heavy sigh. The prince readjusts in his seat, tilting his head pedag... Pedagog... Pedagog... Pedagogically. Pedagogically. Ah, I can't fucking say that. Tilting his head pedagogically. I'm just gonna say diagonally. Diagonally and clearing his throat, as if to make sure he has Hansen's attention, because I can't fucking pronounce that. Were there any other services you performed for Mr. Falk? No! Why? The striped canine swivels a pen in the air. Something relating to his job. Hansen leans forward again, but this time further. Elbows on his knees, he rubs his face in his paws. Averting his gaze, he bites his cheek and scratches his neck. Yeah! Wanted me to snatch some kid for him! Pony! The prince calmly notes it with his pen before turning the page. So Mr. Falk was delegating his duties. The wolf shrugs, still avoiding eye contact. I don't know. Don't care. I just needed it, you know? I didn't. He didn't tell me what it was for. Just told me to grab the first horse I saw. The prince pauses. He specifically requested an equine. Hansen doesn't answer. He sighs, leaning back in the chair while the hyena scribbles in his book. What happened to the ceiling? The wolf looks up with a confused expression. The prince lifts his pen, pointing towards the recent hole in the planks. It collapsed, I guess. I, I don't know. Was I there when I got here? Let's move on to last night. When would you say you were first you first received word of the task? When you called? Yes, Mr. Hansen. 
And when would you say that was? The wolf gives the hyena a confused look. The prince, in response, simply observes Hanson calmly. I don't know. Evening? Eight or something? The hyena marks in his book. And what happened after that? I got my toolkit and headed out. Started on the... Mr. Hanson, I must remind you... As much detail as you can. The wolf huffs, annoyed. Leaning back, he shakes his head as if to rattle his memory. Ash! Ash? Yeah! There was, there was ash in the air! Was there a fire? It was raining all night! I got to the house, started the rep with replacing the lock, like you asked! And the police tape? Replace it! And the little sticker! The prince nods approvingly. And inside... The wolf lifts his paw to scratch at his chest again. Fucking mess like usual! No. What did you do inside? He shrugs. Got it through the back door, closed the cellar hatch, took care of the body. Or oh, what was left of it? Mr. Falks? No. The one in the kitchen. There was a corpse in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And... What did you do with it? Wrapped it in a tarp and stuffed it in the freeze box. It had don't fit, so I had to toss it to the fridge. And what species was this? Don't remember? The prince looks up, silently pressing him for details. Cat, or something. Was I naked up there, but much of the fur was gone. Can you recall the gender? It was not until after whatever Georgia had done to it. Right, I see. And then... Then these three arrived, because I do not want to say that word. I do not like saying it. Fucking pieces of shit! Hansen cuts himself off as the floor begins creaking once more. Two men descend the stairs, talking among themselves, their white shirts almost glowing in the dark, and so do their badges. Hansen turns towards them, but not the prince. Upstairs clear, Mr. Prince, but we found blood. The hyena raises his pen, eyes on his notes. Don't you knock? The weasel's thick tail slowly falls to the floor. Please, if you would be so kind as to wait upstairs. The two officers look at each other before shrugging and making their way back up the stairs. I do apologize. I specifically told them to not disturb. You brought the fucking pigs? The wolf growls in a low voice. Not to worry, Mr. Hansen. They've been informed of the situation. They are merely here to provide security. We want you feeling safe here. Are you fucking- Cigarette? Hiya. The wolf looks down at the hyena's pond in confusion, holding a pack of smokes. Nevertheless, he grabs one. The prince holds out a silver lighter, the clink of the metal cover echoing through the room as the sparks ignite the flame. Three people arrived, you said. The wolf takes a long drag of the cigarette, exhaling heavily. After a second's pause, he nods. Yeah, three. Spotted them through the kitchen window. Uh, thought they were cops. Police were called to the scene Thursday. But they were told to stay away until we brought you in. They weren't cops, but you're gonna be too careful, right? Hid in a wardrobe just by the entrance. You didn't leave? Didn't have my meth yet. I see. Could you describe the three strangers? The wolf takes another drag of his smoke, flicking it to let the ash fall off to the side. Two short and one tall. Details, Mr. Hansen. The wolf leans forward, laying one arm on the table and scratching his head with the other. The tall one was a dog. Age? I don't know. It's hard to see in the dark. Probably mid-twenties. Dark clothes, cream fur. Green mask. Yeah, I think so. The prince's pen quickly moves across the page, murmuring under his breath. The giant. Then there was a rat. Short, skinny, fat tail. The hyena stops again, looking back over his notes with a confused expression. Rat? Looks like a fucking rat to me. He said something about marsh marts. Marsupial. The wolf points with a cigarette. Yeah, that. Blue mask? Yeah. Prince's writing continues. 
Last one had a pink mask. The rabbit. No, raccoon. The hyena stopped slowly raising his eyes to the wolf before placing his notebook down on the table, unfolding his legs and leaning forward. For a split second, Hansen's eyes meet mine. And I feel more exposed than I've ever been in, than I've ever felt in my life. My heart rate picks up, a new wave of anxiety washes, washing over me, coursing through my veins. I quietly readjust myself, paw over my mouth so that I can peek around the barrel. Pain shoots through my left shoulder, all the way down my arm as I move. Are you certain? I was holding a gun against a skull at that point, and I know what a fucking rabbit smells like. Just fuck was it, rabbit. What did he look like? Like a raccoon, I guess. Any distinguishing features? Hansen's gaze drifts back towards me as he scratches his chin. Smelled like cinnamon. The hyena shakes his head. No, Mr. Hansen. Scars, piercings, eye color. Purple eyes. No, he couldn't have seen my eyes yesterday. And then, you let them go. The wolf exhales a trail of smoke through the side of his muzzle, swinging his head in disagreement. No piece of shit tased me in the nuts and that fucking mud broke my nose. Woke up way after they left with this. His paw moves up to pull his shirt to the side, revealing the crude tattoo on his shaved chest. Fascinating. The hyena inspects the mark intently, running his delicate digits along the scars to which the wolf winces. They marked you. Mark? What do you mean they marked me? As Hansen raises his voice in concern, the hyena seems to snap out of his obsession. Calmly, he leans back in his chair, throwing one leg over the other as he adjusts his tie. His paws brush over his pants, looking deep in thought. Do you know where they went? The rat? No, disappeared by those knockout. And the raccoon? The wolf takes a breath, eyes set on the hyena. No! The prince slowly nods. Well, Mr. Hansen, I believe our matter here is concluded. The prince places the notebook back in his bag and closes it. The wolf seems to let out a breath he'd been holding throughout the entire meeting. And so do I. The prince's eyes fall on the pen laying on the table. I lift one leg getting into a crouching position, ready to make a run for it. Although... Before we finish, there was one more detail I'd like to discuss. The hyena reaches out, picking the pen back up and clearing his throat. I plugged my headphones. Have you heard the nickname they have given me, Mr. Hansen? His eyes return to the wolf, tilting his head as he gently presses on the back of the pen, repeatedly retracting and extending the ballpoint. Hansen slowly leans back, taking one last drag of his nearly extinguished cigarette before tossing it aside. What? Red Prince? The prince smiles, chuckling. No. Hansen scratches the wounds on his chest, gaze drawn back to the pen. Yeah, I heard of the other one. And what is it they say? I heard they call you the Blackmail Butcher. That's right. Now, would you say that's a fair name? I don't know. I don't know you. That is a fair point. However, we've been sitting here chatting for quite a while now. I lift my other leg, holding my arm up to stop it from swinging. And based on our time here together tonight, Mr. Hansen, would you say it's an accurate description? I can see Hansen's ragged shoes shuffle along the wooden planks below his chair. No? No, I thought not. Misguided in their effort, that journalist seems oblivious to the fact that they have wrongly named me and my colleagues all as the same man. But even the most simplest of deductions would conclude that this is the work of many, wouldn't you say? Even so, to identify us with such an undignified title truly does a great disservice to the operation at hand, even if 
One of my colleagues seems to have taken a liking to the name. Hansen simply listens, paws on his thighs. Consider instead, if you would, the nature of these three men you had the misfortune of meeting last night. Now, I use the frame men rather misleadingly. Animals would perhaps be a more suitable description, don't you think? Ferals? Yeah, I can get rid of the chat for a second. Gotta find it for... Oh, there it is. Yeah. <sighs> Granted, they have managed to stay out of the public's eye. One must give them that. But to break into Mr. Falk's private home, only to savagely rob him of his life. And not only that, but to then return to the scene of the crime to further deprive the deceased of dignity. Stalking round in the night, dressed as some lawless vigilantes. F for a cause they know nothing of. Mr. Hansen, wouldn't actions such as that constitute the title of butcher? I guess. And such savagery, by the same logic, would then need to be stopped at any cost, no? Yeah. And you understand, of course, that any information that would lead to the capture, capture of these beasts is of the utmost importance to us. Yes. And you are aware that any such information, even if previously withheld, would not be met with disciplinary action, but with handsome compensation. Wolf size meet mine again, but this time they don't look away. Yes. The prince nods. I see. He clears his throat, and the wolf's eyes draw away from mine facing the hyena. Miller. As the weasel and his partner make their way back down the stairs, the prince turns, nodding to them. <coughs> I'm sorry about your daughter, Mr. Hansen. What? They circle the table on either side, each grabbing one of Hansen's arms. Wait, wait, wait! What the fuck is this? And pull him up out of his seat. The prince casually grabs his bag off the table and places it next to his chair, as the two police officers push the wolf down onto it. He kicks his legs, tugging against their grip. You leave my fucking daughter out of this here! The prince adjusts his tie, standing up. I'm gonna bring the chat box back. Well then, Mr. Hansen. I thank you for your time. He slowly strolls around the table. Your information tonight has truly been invaluable. And stops above the wolf said, Unfortunately, you've shown me you're not willing to live for this cause. What the fuck are you talking about? So instead, you will die for it. He gently strokes the pen between his fingers. No, no, wait, I can be useful. I know where the raccoon is. And so do I, but unfortunately right now you're more valuable to us dead than alive. He grabs the wolf's scalp, pressing it hard against the table. He's, he's here, he's here right now. They're going to kill him. Bending down over him, he lines the thin ballpoint pen up with Hansen's eye. Mr. Hansen, do you know the greatest flaw these beasts possess? Please, please, I can do more! Please! It is their inability to separate empathy from ambition. Please, no! Help! His pleadings turn to screams as a needle slowly pierces the side of his eye. Blood runs freely down his face, pulling on the table. What the fuck? I can't watch this. I press my back against the barrel, biting my lip. Wait! That was a pretty fucking dumb move. The screaming stops, replaced by heavy panting and pained whines. I feel my heart pounded in my throat, the adrenaline once again making my wrists tingle. Oh god, this is a terrible idea! 
Raccoon! Fucking help me! The prince slowly leans back up, a small smile stretching across his muzzle. Ah, there you are. How good of you to finally join us. Why don't you come on out? There is so much for us to discuss. The screaming and rustling starts back up. No! No, no! Please wait! And then everything goes quiet. Riot. I peek around the barrel, clutching the piece of mirror in my paw hard enough to feel it cut my skin. Fuck. The hyena leans back, running a paw through his hair. He closes his eyes with a sigh before opening them, smiling around the room. The two cops let go of the wolf's arms, both reaching for their belt. Pull your guns and I'll kill you! I shout with a strained voice and a shaky breath. Now, now, why don't we all just... Calm down for a moment. He gestures with his paws for the weasel and his colleague to stand down. There's no need for violence here tonight. Violence? You just killed him! The prince steps closer, head slowly looking from side to side. Yes, an unfortunate turn of events. His daughter will mourn him. But in time, come to appreciate his sacrifice. Seems we both have blood on our hands now, don't we, Riot? I don't know what you're talking about. But of course I do. I lift my leg towards my chest, readying myself to run. Really now? Tell me, Miller. What was it you found in Mr. Falk's basement again? He waits patiently with his paws behind his back. <sighs> Turning to the weasel. Claws, Mr. Prince. That's correct. Raccoon claws, if I'm not mistaken. I look down at my paw. You killed him, didn't you, Riot? But Mr. Falk took a piece of you with him. Much like our last encounter, you didn't make it out unscathed. We all turn to the window, just before Black Can comes flying through the smashed glass. The prince catches in his paw effortlessly, examining it. Another canister rolls down the stairs. Now Hina drops the middle tin to the floor, stepping back with a paw reaching inside his jacket, disappearing into the fog. Ah. Mm. ah, the cavalry has arrived! Benny! Get your filthy fucking paws away from him! And what is one little lonely bunny going to do to stop me? I shut my eyes, my one working arm shooting up to cover my ear as I drop to the floor. Acrid smoke replaces the rotting wood in my nose, and I cough, but there's another faint smell beneath it. Jasmine. River sits crouched in front of me. She mumbles something, but I can't tell what. Her paws grab at my shoulder and arm, and I wince. Dislocated. Before she locks my arm in a tight grip, placing her boot against my hip and pulls. I cry out as I feel my entire left side crack, the shockwave echoing through my skull. I look down at my left paw. I can move my fingers again! She pulls something from her pocket, stuffing my ears, just as another shot splinters the wooden wall above us. This time my ears don't ring. The smoke slowly dissipates, the table coming back into view. And the wolf. What? Hey! We're gonna leave off here tonight. Ooh, I can't do. Oh, oh. Ooh, I can't. See. 
I can't wait to see where it goes next. Anyways, stay safe. Have a good night. Pack be packing. You did a fucking amazing job. Yeah, the building up and keeping suspense. You did a fucking amazing job. And I will see you all tomorrow.